Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all keeping well and welcome back to our white Abarth SS. Now, yes, you can see it's white. Why is that? It's been cleaned, it's had a wash. What catastrophic event has caused me to clean the car? Well, the engine blew. Now the two things may not seem linked. Let me explain. Join us back in the Abarth, driving the Abarth. So clearly the catastrophic failure has been resolved. So what happened? Well, I took the car out on the journey, about two miles into the journey, that it started to lose performance. And also I noticed the car started to smoke. Now, progressively along the journey, the performance got worse and worse and worse until the car just failed, it just stopped. And I couldn't get the car started. Now I can't emphasize enough, there wasn't any mechanical failure, there wasn't any mechanical sounds of failure at all. So I couldn't hear any clanging, any banging whatsoever. There was none, and I didn't have the stereo on, so I would have heard it. And believe you me, I know what these mechanical failures sound like because I've had engines blow on me before. I've blown many engines up when I was young and I rebuilt engines myself um, when I was younger, back in the day. So what happened? called out the AA. The AA took the car eventually to my mechanic who used to look after my 993S. He did some diagnostic work. First of all we thought it'd be it was fuel or electrical problem again because there was no mechanical sounds coming from the engine even when he spun it over there was no banging or clanging sounds at all. Um, eventually he took the head off to diagnose further what was going on because we decided well there must have been a mechanical failure uh, but we just couldn't see it. We just couldn't. It, we, we just It was just hiding itself. So when he took the head off, you can see, bang, there you go, the pistons have hit the valves, or the valves have hit the pistons, whichever way you look at it. So what happened? Well, it was diagnosed further that the camshaft sprocket that attaches to the crankshaft, which then has a belt that attaches to that camshaft sprocket that then drives the, cam, the overhead cams, um, that sprocket was loose. What had happened is the locating bolt which is a stretch bolt, it's called a stretch bolt, and that had come loose, it actually come out. And it had actually been loose for quite some time, so it had only been hanging on for dear life, holding in that sprocket. Um, of course, I wasn't to know that. We know this because the shoulder of the bolt was rusted, it had surface rust on it. Now that surface rust could only have got on the shoulder of that bolt if the bolt was extending enough out, outside of the actual camshaft sprocket, for enabled it to be open to the elements to rust. So clearly that bolt has been exposed for quite some time for it to have surface rust on it. So the bolt must have just finally come out and there's obviously a key locating the camshaft sprocket onto the onto the crankshaft um, onto the crankshaft end but it just because the bolt had come loose the, the sprocket worked its, its way out and that meant that the camshaft sprocket stopped turning in, in association with the crankshaft the pistons carried on turning round because the crankshaft carried on spinning round. 
the camshaft in effect wasn't turning so the, so the valves stayed open and the pistons hit the valves that's it good night Vienna as they say now we couldn't hear it because the valves are so thin because there's four valves per cylinder this is a 16 valve engine and that's one of the ways how it how it produces such high performance for just a 1.4 litre obviously it's blown it's turbocharged um, but it's such a high performance car for a small size engine a lot of that has to do with the weight of car of course um, but these four valves mean that the valves have to be quite thin to be able to fit in the cylinder head because it's quite a small cylinder head so the valve stems are actually quite 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 thin so, so it means that the valves can be easily bent so when the valves hit the pistons there wasn't there wasn't any sound there wasn't any discernible sound from the cabin of the car because the valves are quite thin now how do I know this well in my research I perform, I perform loads of extensive research we had to decide on on a few options those options were replace the engine too costly the car's only worth about three three and a half grand at best most of the value of this car is in the number plate secondly rebuild the engine too expensive again thirdly rebuild the cylinder head fourthly get a replacement reconditioned cylinder head um, so the actual looked up getting a, a new engine or a replacement engine um, and in the end after speaking to many people I found a, a cylinder head repair specialist called Autotech and I had a good discussion with, with um, this gentleman who runs his company who, who in effect reconditioned cylinder heads and I had a good discussion with with third-party suppliers of parts when I was talking when I was discussing with them about getting parts to rebuild the cylinder head and possibly parts to rebuild the engine perceiving that the engine the bottom end of the engine might be might be blown as well and all the specialists I spoke to who knew this engine said you'd be very unlucky for the bottom end of the engine to be faulty to have failed and to be in effect to have been damaged by this situation by the valves in the pistons so and, and they said unless there's any problem with the engine beforehand the bottom of the engine even though it's done 135,000 miles probably it will be okay just either reconditioning the head or putting a reconditioned head on now after my research and speaking with Autotech the reconditioned head would be 414 pounds would you believe it if I bought all the OEM parts I could not recondition the head myself for that amount of money and that would mean me doing all the labour so it was a no-brainer so I ordered a reconditioned head from Autotech and the head came uh, a few days later. It's a fantastic um, service from Autotech. Can't thank them enough for that, for that work that they performed. They, they delivered the replacement head to my mechanic and they take the old head back so they then recondition that head as long as it's serviceable um, and then that goes forward on to uh, somebody else who has a, a reconditioned head then or requests a reconditioned head for these engines. Also, the benefit of purchasing a, a reconditioned head is that a lot of work is done on the head which means that items such as the valves the valve guides are replaced so you shouldn't get any issues with regards to worn valve guides and obviously new valves are, are implemented where required and they're all lapped in and the head is skimmed so it, it's in effect as as new a, a, a head would be so great for 414 pounds when you think about the cost involved in purchasing a new head which is over well over a thousand pounds to purchase a new head and then uh, and then if i remember right you didn't get all the parts as well you had to rebuild it up yourself so the decision was made we i ordered a reconditioned head and the reconditioned head was fitted by my mechanic so how much did this all cost this is the key piece of information i'm sure you're all chomping at the bit to hear well let's pull over and I'll talk you through it.
So we've pulled into this lay-by. This is one of the areas that we use quite a bit when we're driving with a 458. This is in Wiltshire and uh, just up front ahead of us, we've got Hackpen Hill. So this is a nice section. You might recognize some of these roads that we use. Um, Sam from Seen Through Glass actually has used some of these sections as well. So it's, it's pretty cool. So not that I'm gonna really show you anything, but this is the engine. This is the focus of this issue. So as I detailed earlier, it was a reconditioned head from the company Autotech. Thanks again for, um, to the guys at Autotech or to the single man band at uh, Autotech. Um, provide a, provided a very good service, 414 pounds, including VAT for the reconditioned head. And that was including delivery. And that was a great service, great price. So the head was reconditioned. The head was, the head was put back on the car, like I say, 414 pounds, including VAT for the reconditioned head. Now, the mechanics work to actually rebuild the engine. Obviously, this is includes the head being removed, any, any explorative work that had to be performed beforehand. So I was already into about one and a half thousand pounds um, before we actually knew what was wrong with the car because you had to take the head off to, to diagnose the catastrophic failure. So if I'd looked at buying another car, then I'd lost that one and a half thousand pounds anyway. And then another car would have cost me circa um, 3,000 pounds, three or 4,000 pounds. Um, obviously not a great car, but a car that I could use just as a driver. But the trouble with that is then, if I'd gone down that route and replaced the car, I'd obviously lose the history of this car, but you're also into the situation of purchasing a car with an unknown history for me. So I may be into the costs of, of uh, remediation work, brakes, exhaust, and all these other bits and pieces, and maybe wheel bearings and such like, because you can't guarantee that. Now there's, there's a bit of a, <laughs> a clue there to what happened later on. So I'd have just replaced the, the brakes on this car. I did it all myself, as you can see, if you want to check out a video below, I, I, I've got a video covering the replacement of the brakes on this car. So I didn't want to purchase another car that may have those issues as well and then extend more money on top of the actual procurement of the car. And also this car has a lot of history for me. My son was very young. My son was five years old when I bought this. I went for a nasty divorce um, the year, well, a few years afterwards, for a few years afterwards, but it won't go into that. Um, but so this car's got a lot of history for me and, and so I, you know, a lot of emotional attachment. So I wanted to try and keep the car if I could anyway, but obviously I'm not gonna spend an exorbitant amount over the top to keep it. So. I'll stop waffling and I'll get on to the, to the main point of the subject here. So the cost to repair this, the engine was around £2,700 and that's the cost to get it back working, the engine repaired and that was the explorative work as well, dismantling the, dismantling the engine um, to actually see what had caused the failure. That price, like I say, included the replacement, the reconditioned cylinder head and all the gaskets, a new cam belt, a new cam belt, new cam sprocket new bolt obviously it's actually a, a what they call a stretch bolt they have to use the one that has the the, the, the shank on it that was rusted it has a, it's called what's it called a stretch bolt that means that when you tighten it you can only use it once you tighten up the bolt and the actual torque that you tighten the bolt to actually partly stretches the bolt and that stretching of the bolt puts it under more tension to hold the cam sprocket in against the the crankshaft but you cannot re reuse those bolts again. So it's very important, never reuse stretch bolts again because they will, they will snap either when you're retorquing them again or <laughs> later on, which you don't want, of course. So this engine now is in a very good state. Um, the bottom end didn't, re need, didn't need replacing. The mechanics I spoke to and the engineers that I spoke to were correct. The bottom end was fine. Um, we we um, put the reconditioned head on, fired up, no problems. The car is like as though nothing had happened. But it's actually improved, of course. Yeah, you wouldn't want to spend that amount of money on just improving the engine to that level, but it's now got cam belts, new cam belt, new cam sprockets. Um, it's got all new guides on there, new, new, um, new tensioners for the cam belt. And of course, we now have a reconditioned cylinder head on there, which means that the 135,000 mile wear that was in that cylinder head has now been resolved. So there would have been valve guide wear, there would have been some oil burn, or to be honest, the engine wasn't burning any oil or not a significant amount of oil. So for a 135,000 mile engine, it was in very good condition, but it's had a top end rebuild in effect. So that's how we resolve that. Now, there's another tale. <laughs> it's never as simple as that, is it? Subsequently, when the car was back on the road, um, during that period of time when the car was being repaired, the MOT ran out, so I had to sawn the car. Obviously, the car wasn't on the public road, so there's no issues there. It was in the mechanic's workshop being repaired. 
when it went to the MOT, it failed the flipping MOT, didn't it? Now, what did it fail on? It failed on the front trailing arm, the rear shock absorbers and the rear wheel bearings. So how much did all that cost? Well, that came to around 920, 930 pounds. So all told, to get this car back on the road again, it was around 3,600 pounds. That's, that may seem crazy, but remember, nearly a thousand pounds of that was MOT remediation work. And around a thousand to a thousand and a half of that was stripping the engine down to diagnose the catastrophic failure. So you could argue the point around two and a half grand of that was sort of, that had to be done anyway. Um, I know stripping the engine down wouldn't have had to have been done if the engine hadn't failed, but it is what it is. Now, if some of you are typing in furiously into the keyboard saying, oh, I bet it had deferred maintenance, that car's in a hell of a state. Obviously it's washed now, so it's nice and clean now. Yes, there was deferred maintenance on it. And yes, one of those deferred maintenance items was the fact that the cam belt needed replacing. In fact, the cam belt should have been replaced two years ago. Just that I've been so busy, I haven't got around to it. I know that sounds crazy, but that didn't cause the failure. The cam belt was fine. It was in good condition. Of course, we didn't reuse it. You don't reuse a cam belt once you've removed it, but it was in good condition. There was no slippage. That wasn't the problem. Like I said, it was the cam bolt that had worked loose. Now, if, if we changed the cam belt, would we have noticed that bolt hanging out? No, you wouldn't, because the way how you fit a cam belt on these and the way the engine is situated, as you can see, it's so deep down, the bottom end of the crankshaft is very low. You, once you've got the, the casing off to be able to gain access to replace the cam belt, you can't see that bolt and you can't see that crankshaft pulley. You work the camshaft, you work the cam belt around the bottom, the bottom cam belt pulley. So you can't really see if the bolt had worked loose or not. So almost certainly you wouldn't have noticed. So if I'd had the cam belt replaced, cam belt would have been replaced, fit back together. And I would have probably thought that whoever changed the cam belt may have may have loosened the bolt for some reason and caused the failure when that wasn't the case it's just one of those things the cat the, the bolt worked loose it caused a catastrophic failure we managed to mitigate most of the cost by doing a lot of research finding out that the bottom end of the engine is, is strong enough to be able to support just the reconditioned hand in and pretty much we got away with it yeah, you can't really say three and a half thousand pounds is getting away with it, but cars cost money. If you think a car's not going to cost you money, then you're in for a serious surprise. So that's the end of the tale. The car's now back on the road. Great to have it back on the road. As you can see, I'm even taking care and giving it a wash. Now, to bring it all back to the, to the beginning story, how does the catastrophic failure link with the car being washed? Well, the mechanic was so embarrassed at the state of the car being so dirty, he washed it before he brought it into his workshop initially uh, because he, he deals with Porsches, very, very nice Porsches and nice cars. And of course, he didn't want this sitting in his, in his workshop, looking a hell of a state with customers coming to and fro. And probably, you know, his garage, his workshop, his, his garage workshop is very clean as well. He didn't want any muck coming off the car. So he actually gave it a first wash. So he started this renewed process so I wanted to wash it as well for this video. So I gave it a really intensive wash a few days ago on top of the wash that he'd given the car. And I'm gonna keep it fairly clean now. So you can hold me to it. <laughs> so we're gonna keep the, keep the car fairly clean. Um, it's easier to do once it's been cleaned thoroughly anyway. And as you can see, there's no more moss on the car or anything. It just needed a, a really good clean, a really good deep cleanse and a really good clean with a power jet washer. Now, I wouldn't usually use a power jet washer, certainly never on a performance car, because you can push moisture under the paint. But for this car, this car doesn't really have any value, as I've said. I mean, it's worth the value of what I've spent on it pretty much to rebuild the engine, and then that's worth more than the car. This number plate is getting on to being worth more than the actual car's worth. But, you know, it's, it's a really reliable daily driver, hopefully. <laughs> and it's done 136,000 miles now. What a great car. And even though we've had this hiccup with the mechanical failure, it's done me proud. So well done, Abar. So if you've enjoyed this story, uh, regaling you of the woes, the tales of woes 
um, for the remediation for the catastrophic failure of my 135,000, now 136,000 mile of bath, then please give the video a thumbs up. Very important, these things for the good old YouTube algorithm. If you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. Got some great future content to come. We've already got events, some events booked for the 458, and the 458 currently is away at the moment. More to come, part two on the previous video to come. Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next video.